Hello, it's me, David Stark. Welcome to the Airships development stream. Um, thanks for tuning in, if you're tuning in. So, today I'm going to do some more development on land ships. Just going to press some buttons on OBS here. I also have now actually set up my iPad to um, monitor the chat so I can actually see the chat while I'm streaming rather than having to switch around, which is nice. Um, so I'm just going to, if you have any questions, put it on the chat and I can answer you um, by saying words. Hi person, really long username that I'm not going to try and actually pronounce. Okay, so uh, let's get started. Hi everyone. Um, nice for you to join me. I've just set up uh, my iPad to monitor the um, the chat channel so I can see what you're saying without having to switch around. As you can see, I'm currently just pressing buttons on OBS and ta-da! Here we are in the actual desktop. Um, hi, person with a really long name that I can't pronounce. So today I'm going to do more things on um, land ships, um, which are like big walkie things. Um, that can stomp around and crush enemies and so on, and which are a kind of a cheaper but less flexible alternative to airships. So I'm going to just start out by showing you what these actually look like at the moment. My goal for today really is to get it to a point where I uh, um, where I have some nice new screenshots to show up. Because it's Saturday, which means it's screenshot Saturday, which means I want to have some pretty new pictures. Right now it doesn't look so pretty yet, but we'll work on that. Okay, so this is the combat setup, and I can add in a land ship, say this one. And I need to add an enemy, like this random building. Okay, here we are. It's got legs, and it can walk, mostly. Yeah, it's a bit buggy, but you know, we're getting there. And I'm just going to like ignore all the various bugs for now and instead just try to make it look prettier so I have something to show off. Just sanity checking that um, this actually looks alright on Twitch. You have to forgive me my you know, general lack ability on this. I'm really, really, really new to Twitch streaming. So I'm literally just kind of pressing buttons and hoping it does the right thing. Yeah, 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 okay, that works. Cool. Airships forums, um, to-do list. Okay. So there's a whole bunch of minor fixes that I should do, which I'm going to ignore, and I'm going to go straight to actually drawing proper leg graphics. I have a concept for what these are going to look like, which is ooh, doo -doo, sort of like this. Okay, so the idea here is, um, yeah, basically these metal legs um, with feet at the bottom, and I'm going to draw these legs now in uh, three segments and then uh, rewrite the leg drawing code to actually use those instead of the really boring um, grey lines which it's using at the moment. Okay. To do that we need to go into GIMP, which is the drawing program. I do all the graphics for this on. Gonna create a entirely new sprite sheet for these um, because they're going to be pretty big and they're going to be drawn in a separate layer from uh, all the major graphics so I can use a separate sprite sheet for that and that's okay. Um, so so the reason this sprite sheet stuff matters is that I'm trying to make the graphics drawing have reasonable performance and well one way to do that is to avoid having to switch textures uh, a lot um, while driving the graphics and so each visual layer in general um, uses a particular single texture as a sprite sheet and doesn't have to switch. 
and um, I can draw, draw off the legs separately on their own layer and so there can be uh, wheels and legs uh, sprite sheet and that's fine um, dum -dum. Okay, and I also need the official color scheme. Um, a little while ago, uh, for airships, I think 6.3, I redrew all the graphics to have a consistent color scheme rather than just random colors I picked. So everything you see now in the game is made out of one of these, of the combination of these colors, which makes things a bit more consistent. So, as I mentioned, okay, so I'm, I'm going to do the leg for the small legs module. And that module has uh, legs that are made of segments that are 70 pixels long. So, um, that's, um, that's how long I should make the graphics. We'll start out by just making a first layer of background grey and then a uh, next layer of kind of um, of areas which is just going to be this little overlay that lets me see approximately where I want to draw things. So the legs going to be 70 pixels tall but like I'm going to do like the top and then the top half of the leg, bottom half of the leg and foot. Um, but because of the way the graphics work, I actually want to make this part quite a lot bigger because it's easiest graphics wise if it rotates around its center. So it's really going to be 140 pixels. So let's kind of um, do that. So it's going to be 140 pixels long. I'm doing these horizontally because of... Um, do I want to do them horizontally? Yes, because rotation of zero is pointing straight ahead. Um, that's why at the moment in the setup when you place ships uh, they have their legs kind of sticking out the front. Oh, hi Macfried. Nice to see you here. Okay, um, and I guess there might be like um, up to like 20 pixels wide. Yeah, that seems possible. Okay, so in this area we're actually going to draw our leg. And I guess um, the actual leg is going to be in the bottom half of that so this this top half is really only just for balancing so it's going to rotate around this point don't need that so strong I just need this as a guideline then finally let's do the actual sprite sheet and start blocking out the basic shape of this um, upper leg and because it's going to be a metal leg I'm going to make it out of the steel collar here and um, okay so first off it's going to have a big joint here and that's going to be pretty massive because it probably needs to cover a multitude of sins um, in graphical detail so let's just make this a really massive joint 20 times 20 pixels centered on here yeah okay so this is the top of the joint and then the basic idea is just uh, it's going to be you know a rectangle going down and uh, tapering a little bit as it goes down so um, maybe something like that and then halfway down We're gonna taper it just a little bit. Okay, 
So that's that's pretty reasonable. And as you saw on the sketch, which I'll just show again, um, or not? Yeah, there we go. Um, the idea was to have these um, holes in the legs, both because it looks cool and because well, it makes the legs lighter. So that makes uh, quite a lot of sense. So let's add those holes with like regular spacing. Mm -hmm. That's yeah okay. That's pretty conservative holes. Oops. Um. Keep on doing the wrong thing. Alright, so uh, this is only the top part of the leg. Um, so this is where it attaches to the um, actual ship. And here is going to be where it um, has the joint for the lower part of the leg. Okay, like that. Yeah, that's, that's probably reasonable first um, kind of impression of doing this. Um, Yep, we can always fiddle with it later. Um, now let's do the lower leg next. So we're just going to duplicate this area indicator we've got here. So this is going to be the lower part of the leg. So again, it will want a joint, and this joint wants to be a bit bigger than this, but not much. So that's uh, 8 pixels. So let's make it 10 pixels. Now let's make it 12. Big, nobly expressive shapes. That. Oh dear. Still on color. No steel. Oh, I'm drawing it on the wrong layer. There. Okay. Then again. Sort of like this. And again, halfway down, gonna make it a bit narrower yet. Yep, add holes. Probably just to the upper part here. And uh, move them all up by one. Okay, cool. And um, finally, we need the foot, which can be, um, which doesn't have to be 70 units. So let's just take this Aries thing again. Block out the smaller area where the foot's gonna go. So the basic idea with the foot is just, it's this. So 
So let's just block like this. And it too has a joint. Big joint covering sins. There you go. And um, I guess we now want to add some detail to all of this stuff. So the foot might have a kind of a ribbing type thing going on. So oh, it's it's uh, my partner Ray who's currently um, traveling to a conference in the UK. Yeah, important learning moment. Maybe turn off GChat before starting to stream, huh? Yeah, something like that. Just some kind of thing that suggests that it's got slight grippy surfaces on the foot. Okay. Um, and up here we might want to add like some cables as a visual interest so let's do these in red paint so like have a cable kind of sneaking snaking out of the out of the bit here And then down here, that's like the um, some kind of maybe some control wire or the bit where the steam goes through or something doesn't really matter. Just a little visual detail. Yep. Um, yeah, that will do. So these graphics look really simple and the reason they look really simple is now I'm going to add a whole secondary set of layers where all of the um, surface normals, all of the um, bump mapping actually happens. And I see that my iPad keeps on going to sleep and exiting me from the room. So, if you said anything uh, you wanted me to see uh, in the last five minutes, please repeat it because I didn't see it. Still learning. Okay, so let's make the um, surface normal thing. So, the way this works is basically I create a second image where the color in each pixel um, basically explains to the shader where um, what angle the object has so where does the light come from and um, hence how much should it be lit by the lighting system so let's create a folder and we basically need um, vertical and horizontal and shiny which is just an indicator of how much it should be lit up and yeah so you can see here for example this is the main sprite sheet with all the components and this is the bump map and it sort of looks like uh, everything's a weird ugly color and everything's being really brightly lit with red from the top and brightly lit with green from the left so let's start out by doing the vertical bump map. So it's all red. Sort of like this. So now everything in here which is angled um, towards the top. Oh, the foot isn't symmetric. Thanks for telling me. Uh, 
Yeah, it's not symmetric. Thank you. Very good point. Okay, yeah. Let's fix that up. Yeah, now it's symmetric. It looks better. Thanks, guys. Okay. So, bump. Everything that's left from top is going to be a slightly redder shade of red. This one. Okay, so, and this is like, this is basically, um, so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not an artistic person at all, right? I, uh, I'm a programmer type person, and so all of the art I do for this, I kind of reason my way through. Um, so I'm just going, well, it makes sense that it has this shape. And so the way I do the lighting is I just go, oh, well, uh, it has this shape, and hence the light must come from this direction and so on. Um, and that way I kind of, you know, managed to find my way through. So, here. Slip from the top here. And, um, obviously this round bit here should be lit too. Yeah, sort of like that. And then these are going in. So I actually want the lighting to be here. So yeah, as you can see, it's just, it's, it's really a step process of draw the basic outline, draw the details, and then, um, draw the lighting map and just throw it at the shader and let the shader sort out all the pretty little details. Okay, so that's the all the lighting from the top. I'm probably going to add some detail in here, but um, yeah, okay, so what's the idea? Um, I guess it could kind of go in again at another level, so I'm just going to make a completely temporary layer here just to have a guideline for where it does the inny um, like that yep there we go and that's not going to be part of the final sprite sheet so as you can see like it's all very monocolored but the monocoloredness then ends up going away because of the magic of um, the lighting engine. Yeah, something like that. Okay, so that's all the lighting that comes from the top. Now let's do all the lighting that comes from the bottom is actually going to be precisely symmetrical. There's probably some kind of clever way in which I could like not have to do this twice, but um, yeah, I can think of one. Um, if I use the co select by color tool and say I want exactly this color, boing, then I copy it, I paste it, I vertically flip it and I fill it the darker red and I put it into position and ta-da that was cheaper slight tidying up because obviously this these lines here shouldn't have that shading on them okay fixed so now we just need to do um, lighting from left and right the basic color and um, this is the colorful stuff lit from the left okay 
and again I can be sort of lazy here actually and only do the top half say and then um, just clone the bottom half Stuff lit from the right. iPads fall asleep again. Having the iPad is definitely good, but um, can I? My apologies, as I just press buttons on the iPad quickly. Um, yes. Okay, I think I've convinced the iPad to no longer like shut off after two minutes, which means I can now more per permanently see what you're saying. Awesome. More pixels. I hope this is fun too. This en ends up being more of a pixel art stream than a game development stream, but yeah. Anyway. I'm definitely enjoying the streaming thing, as I said. Um, after the first one I did, um, it's actually pretty productive for me as well because I get to just talk to you guys about things and that uh, actually helps me think. Oops. Yeah, so, used to flip vertically. Um, to make it a bit faster. Yeah, so that's all the lighting on this top one done. Now the um, there's a final layer which I need to do, which is the shininess layer. So that just controls how much it reacts to lighting, which is basically a way of saying where's the metal bits. There we go. The answer is the metal bits are nearly everywhere. So this is this is the color for well, this this I guess is the color for metal. Yep. And uh, it's actually everywhere except for like in this bit down here, which is metal too, but it's recessed, so we want it to be a bit darker. Okay, so, so that's done. That's the entire lighting done for um, that top part of the leg. Which means I'm going to continue working on this now. I'm not going to um, give quite as much of a play-by-play -play thing. I'm just going to talk about uh, other airship related things. So if you do have any questions, um, now's a great time um, because... I can answer them. If you don't, I'm probably just going to blather on about something. Oh, um, I'm going to show you, like, my cats later, because they're cute, and you might like that. I'll uh, drag them in front of the camera, make them pose. They're listed on the. Uh, Wiki, I believe, as official co-developers of the game, so they should get some air time too.
is dead air a term in uh, Twitch streaming? As you can see, I'm basically just going, how, how does Twitch streaming? What, what, is, what is the Twitch streaming? I don't know, help, because I actually really don't know. Um, but, you know, um, it's exciting. You're going to see quick blow-by-blow um, -blow improvements um, as I figure out stuff that is really obvious to everyone except for me, like um, making the iPad uh, behave right. Ah, here's a question. Uh, am I going to add infantry uh, to walk with the land ships? Yes, that's actually the major other part of um, version 7, that apart from the land ships, um, I want to heavily extend the way that um, troops work. Because right now you can have troops in your airship and you can tell them to jump over and attack another airship. Um, but beyond that, their behavior is really limited. Like if they fall on the ground while trying to jump, they just stand there looking lost because they don't have an AI to to move from um, um, to move across bits of land, and that's something that needs fixing. Um, that should also enable a whole bunch of other things like infantry, like. Um, being able to um, tell your crew to abandon ship, for example. So, you, like, if your ship's kind of on fire and on the ground, you might say, like, okay, get out of one ship and move into the next one um, and reinforce the guys there. And uh, finally, the point is that um, in the update after Death 7, um, one of the major focuses is going to be monsters. So dragons, obviously, they're the kind of, you know, headline monster, but also a lot of other stuff like um, want to put in giant spiders and sky crack and mechanical ducks, whatever. I mean, you know, I'm saying I want to put this in. Please don't take this as a this is definitely going to be in. If, if any of these things turn out to be really hard or not fun or something, they'll just get dropped out. Um, will there be variation of infantry? Uh, actually, I have given zero thought to that. Um, I mean, right now there is a bit. There's grenadiers and there's guards and there's um, marines. Um, there was a suggestion on the forum as well, I think, about making um, kind of artillery pieces that infantry could drag around, which, yeah, that could be, that could be cool. Um, I want to... I want to abstract the whole infantry stuff a bit so that the same code that's being used for infantry right now can be used for like small spiders swarming over your ship and eating your face uh, and similarly entertaining things. And as a side effect of that, of course, yeah, I mean, artillery would also work. Um, the internals are a bit silly in this sense because like the categorization inside the codes ended up being there's really two kinds of things. There's big stuff, um, which collides with other big stuff, and there's small stuff, which doesn't. So big stuff are airships and buildings and land ships, and it's also going to be monsters, like big monsters, like dragons are basically big airships that can collide with other airships. And then small monsters are going to be like troops, so spiders. Small spiders are going to be like, um, like boarding troops. Um, and another thing, of course, that's needed there is support for big stuff being able to shoot small stuff and vice versa. Uh, so yeah, variation in infantry. Um, it's definitely fundamentally should be, you know, the machinery for doing this sort of thing. Uh, it's going to be in there. Um, I, ha I genuinely haven't thought much about what the details of it are going to be, but I think that's a good point. The could or maybe even should be uh, variation in there and the idea is that like uh, infantry can actually shoot um, like airships and stuff like that and vice versa mm -hmm. ah, another thing Okay, so paratroopers. So I guess the point with these guys would be basically with uh, 
um, with air marines at the moment, you have to be like really close to the target and a little bit above ideally, and they just jump over in a kind of suicidally brave way. And then you've got grenadiers are sort of expensive, and they've got grappling hooks and so on. And if you have paratroopers, um, they're, they're kind of the um, bomb equivalent uh, of of troops, so they can only go down but they can go far way down without like going splotch. Yeah, I think I think that's a highly reasonable concept actually, um, because actually right now evading buildings is weirdly difficult. You have to uh, get close enough to the building and sometimes it's in between trees and something and that makes it sort of hard. Uh, paratroopers would make that a lot easier and that kind of makes sense. Yeah, and yeah, so the idea is that hopefully with the upgrade, if the power trooper doesn't land on the building, um, then he can still like walk towards the building and knock on the front door with a gun and say hi. Okay, so lower leg is all done. Now I just need to do the foot. Then we'll get to some actual uh, programming bits where I'm going to um, integrate these new graphics with the game. Yes, I'm I'm enjoying this whole streaming thing definitely. Um it's sort of good as well because I'm currently kind of laid up at home. I I hurt my foot, then it got better, then I hurt it more. Um because I went to uh the Fantasy BaselCon and um stood there for several days solid. Um so I now have exciting cream to put on my feet. It's called uh, Diclofenac. It's mostly famous for killing vultures. Um, and I have foot baths and stretching exercises and all of, all of this great stuff that makes you feel like an old man. And I did the lighting on that bit the wrong way around. I did the lighting on everything the wrong way around here. That was, that was really clever, David. Um, super clever, okay. Gonna have to redo the lighting here. Yeah, the green light is coming from the left, right? So, yeah, quite. Oh yeah, so dead air, it's like a radio term, I'm told. It's like this thing which I'm doing right now, which is not talking. Um, which of course, um, I mean, this is a radio, this is an audio and video stream, so you can see I'm doing something. And it's hopefully not completely boring for you. Uh, but obviously, in uh, a radio situation, this is like the worst thing humanly possible. Um, there's no sounds coming out of the thing. Um, it's also the uh, title of a really good book, actually, which you should read. It's by Ian Banks. Uh, you might know Ian M. Banks, um, which is his, what well, was his science fiction writing alter ego. And he also wrote non science fiction books, which are also very good. Dead Air is about um, a shock jock, a. Uh, controversial radio presenter uh, living in London and um, getting entangled in a variety of things which he really shouldn't have gotten entangled in. And um, 
I really like it. I especially like the book because it manages to do something kind of unusual, which is that I think the main character is, is a complete asshole. Um, he's, you know, a selfish bastard, really. But um, you still end up really, you know, caring about him. You still don't want him to suffer as badly as uh, he nearly suffers. Yeah, I mean, Ian Banks, as the writer, as an inspiration is obviously just a major thing. I think I think I mentioned a bunch of times that uh, with this game, like, I for a long time was kind of thinking, hey, I want to make a game where you design uh, spaceships. And at some point I went, hey, airships could be kind of more interesting because I'd seen a bunch of games where you do design spaceships and it somehow never really worked. Um... Uh, my theory for why it never really worked is that um, uh, space is big and sterile and everything just sort of floats around and goes pew, 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 pew. And airships are much more fun because they have ramming and crashing and horrible things. Um, the kind of full blood, sweat and tears experience, which you can't really get in space. And of course, if you really want this, but in space, uh, you can get gratuitous space battles, which is kind of airships in space. Minus some things. My game's better, obviously. Much better. Yeah, I was following the, uh, the launch of gratuitous space battles too. Ah, here's another question. Yeah, um, Pioneer units. Yeah, I think there was a mention of like having some kind of shovel type thing. Um, yeah, let's have to think about how that's actually done. Um, I've uh, so what I did in the last stream actually is I reduced the damage caused by ramming um, soil quite a bit. So now a big land ship can pretty much just sort of you know, repeatedly ram soil until it produces a nice um, platform. And bunkers, well... Yeah, I mean, I guess these are pretty much buildings. Um, so I guess really what we're talking about here is that the AI should be smart enough to go, um, oh, let's go inside this building where we're a bit safer. Um, yeah, anti-infantry weaponry. So my my idea here really is that like um, I I just want to enable infant. I want to enable both infantry shooting uh, ships and ship shooting infantry with the normal weapons. So um, if you if you want to make an anti-infantry mech, for example, uh, yeah, just make a mech with a Gatling gun on it, and that's that's going to be pretty effective. Because obviously, basically. Um, Infantry has no hit points to speak of, but it's tiny, so what we really want is something that spams bullets. Uh, sure, you can you can shoot at them with like a heavy cannon, but if it misses, nothing nothing happens. So yeah, Gatling guns are going to be the way forward there. Okay, I think I'm all done with the um, graphics here. I've got the legs, I've got the shading. Um, Gonna save this. Gonna um, remove those bits. Okay, so this is the sprite sheet itself, which we're gonna export. Here as wheels and legs. Then we have the bump, which is going to be um, adding these three color channels on top of one another. There we go. That's wheels and legs bump.
Mm-hmm. Foxholes and trenches. Um, yeah, I mean, ideally, ideally, foxholes and trenches are going to be something you can pretty much just make by editing the landscape. Um, so you can edit, um, you can edit the landscape in the game already, and it's a bit of a semi-useful feature because who really cares about the landscape? You're floating above it. But uh, with landships and with infantry and so on, hopefully it will make sense to make like trenches for your infantry or like ditches for enemy landships to get stuck in. And, and stuff like that. So it's going to be hopefully a whole kind of mudslinging, stompy, smashy wall at the bottom. And yeah, I mean, I think, you know, right now what I'm doing is I'm kind of putting in all the components and then it's honestly going to take a few iterations of uh, figuring out all the secondary stuff until that's going to be really solid and fun. But as usual, you know, I want to, I want to get... Um, I want to get the get the basics kind of up there and in your hand so you can actually play it. And then we're going to see about uh, the balancing and the fun and all the details. Okay, so I've exported these two new sprite sheets into the game. Um, now I need to actually uh, register them with the system. Um, just going to rebuild it so it actually includes the new images into the archive. And then we need to go into Oh yes, it's gonna be in rotating shader. Mm -hmm. We're gonna to have to make this slightly cleverer than it currently is. Okay. Well, we can do that. Okay. So first off, we need to go into appearance here. Um, this is the kind of main drawing system. And we need to create a new sprite sheet. There we go. And then this here, this is the kind of fancy shader which is actually supports taking graphics which have this light map on and then rotating them and correctly figuring out where the light is now coming from given that the light map itself has rotated. Um, so this is a complicated shader and so I only use it when I have to, but I do have to use it here and it's currently still programmed to assume that you're always going to need the default sprite sheet, which is no longer true. Yeah. But that's okay, we can fix that. You can have a default implementation that uses the default sprite sheet, but then here in the main one, um, we actually say, well, it can be any um, can be any sprite sheet at all. Same thing. So this code is all a bit hairy because it needs to deal uh, with about three different levels of how graphics work. Um, 
in the optimal case it's um, locked in it locks in the shader and then draws a whole bunch of different things on the screen at once and that's that's like the best option um, but um, it also needs to have support for that just being a individual draw without locking in the shader and moreover it needs to have support for uh, fallback which is here um, where if you've turned on simple graphics if there is no lighting map or if um, it's unable to load the shaders for reasons probably a graphics card being ancient then it uses a much simpler drawing system can't imagine how developers who actually end up writing the game to support both OpenGL and DirectX survive without going mad. I mean, I guess the answer is you have lots of people and more layers of abstraction. Um, okay, so that should all work now. I can tell this thing to use a rotating shader with North and the Sprite Sheet. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is I actually need to um, I actually need to specify in the module type what um, where everything is, where the graphics are. And so in the leg spec we now need three new images, which are upper leg, lower leg, and foot. So, underground buildings well cellars I mean I guess you can sort of do this by just making a precisely shaped pit to put your building into um, but yeah I mean the idea that it's kind of more solid it has a certain charm yeah I kind of like the idea of having g giving building cellars um, it's it's definitely one of those, um, this sounds cool, is it cool enough to put in, or is it adding complication that will confuse people and take more work? I uh, haven't made up my mind, but I will definitely keep this one in mind. Yeah, definitely, I mean, you'd put, you'd put the, uh, you'd put the storage stuff, you'd put the, like, crew stuff, you'd put everything, I guess, that wants to be safe, it doesn't have to stick out, you'd put into the cellar. Okay, so leg specs now expect to be told about these two new things, which of course makes everything back. Okay. Okay, so for the upper leg, source x and y are going to be 1, source width is going to be 140, and source height is 20, and it's not flipped. There we go. Then for the lower leg, x is the same, y is going to be 22, I think, but let's just check that. Check yourself before you... 
I'm not even going to say it, sorry guys. Yeah, 22. Yeah. And then finally, the, the foot is logically going to be at 43. Still a height of 20, but a much less of a width. Or uh, also 20. Okay, so that's all the bits. And I'm just going to duplicate this and put it into the other leg as well. Now we have all the problems down here um, where it doesn't work anymore. Um, so I'm just going to put in three nulls, which will make this not work anymore but we don't care right now. We just want the small legs to start working and then we'll worry about everything else. My flatmate is going to be climbed on by the cat. Okay. So we've created the images, we've put them in, we've registered them. Now we just need to like actually draw them. Um, this is the bit where uh, you potentially see me flounder and curse with like maths and trigonometry and other things that I learned in high school and then forgot. Okay, so drawing ships is organized into a series of layers. Um, so it draws like the back and then the legs and so on and so on. Um, And here is the tracks and legs layer, and that's what we're going to use. Okay. So this is the uh, old code. This is the really old code that doesn't work. This is the old code for drawing legs. Now we want to draw the new code for legs. just going to draw the upper and then the lower and then the foot in that order. I think that's correct. Maybe? Yes. Okay. Ah, oh, like uh, the question, will you add clips so that a carrier ship could drop a ground ship? Um, yeah, I mean it's totally doable in the sense that um, the game has a you know the game's capable of uh, dealing with arbitrary fragments of ships so um, you could even you can even like use this generically you could just build some sort of construction that can separate in some kind of way uh, the only the only limit to this is that having it you're not really going to be able to get it joined back up because that's a lot more tricky. Checking whether, uh, like, uh, your airship and your land ship, how they fit back together uh, once they've been separated. So that's that's sort of tricky. Um, so you could you could do drop ships, but you could only ever drop your ship once, and then it's it's done. Ah, for the infantry, there could be sort of anti-armor infantry. Without a tank rifles, yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, yeah, big rifles or maybe even rocket propelled grenades. I mean, that's the classic, of course. Panzerfaust. Uh, it's just about technologically in gamut. Um, gonna af after I'm done with this stream, I'm gonna pretty much just go and like write down uh, the various ideas you're producing here. As as I, you know, I'm just gonna repeat like. This is really cool. Th like, lots of ideas are awesome. Um, I can't guarantee that anything in particular is going to go in. Um, I don't. I don't want to end up in the situation where I like say yes, that sounds great to all ideas that uh, sound great, and then people get disappointed when <laughs> all the ideas that sound great don't all get put in. Um, so ev everything you're telling me, like, 
unless I tell you no, that's a stupid idea, is definitely going to go into considerations. But um, I may decide that it's not worth it, or it's too complicated, or it unbalances the game, or something like that, or I just don't have the time. Um, but I might equally decide, hey, that sounds cool, let's put it in. To some degree, I'm kind of going, well, I've been working on this for a year and a half, and I want to see it complete and polished and playable. And so I have to sort of go, well, um, I have to kind of stop myself from putting in every sing single cool idea I have. Um, one way I'm kind of working and getting around this as well is to just, if there's large ideas which, are sound, which sound cool, I kind of tell myself, well, David, that sounds like a great expansion pack. Um, or um, first release update or something like that. So, depending on how things go, you might just end up getting extra stuff and features after the official 1.0 release. Anyway, drawing legs. Um, okay, so we're going to the the place where the leg actually is. And then we're drawing the leg, so that's that's pretty much correct. Okay, so oh yeah, so first off, I want to do lock shader. Boy, oh god, um, they're not going to lock the shader for now, which is going to make this really inefficient. But who cares about efficiency right now? So I'm just going to go rotating shader dot. draw um, I need the ambient color as well. Which do I actually need this, or is this just a hallucination? Okay, I need it under very specific circumstances. I guess I can't get around that, so I really need to set this in all the way from the top. Ah, da -da, okay, um, so any and all ship layers that also need to be given the ambient color. Good stuff. This makes everything big slightly. But we can probably use the search and replace. Except we can't because it fucks up this. More search and replace to undo the damage the first search and replace did. Yeah, there we go. And in here, it's also unhappy, but that's fine, we can fix that. So it's just passing in this ambient tint value 
into all of the um, into all of the various layers of drawing the ship because we need it in this particular case. Okay. Yeah, so that's good. Now just X and Y are a little bit more complicated than that. Should be MX plus L dot back dot X offset. Okay. So that's now nearly right. So we're drawing, we're currently saying that the top left of where we draw the leg should be where the um, where the center of it should actually be. So now we just need to subtract um, L dot spec dot upper leg dot source width divided by two. So if this math makes no sense to you, the reason is probably that it's using a slightly weird way of doing things, which is to, um, when you draw an image, you are drawing, you are specifying the coordinates in terms of where the top left of the image goes, but when you specify a rotation, it nevertheless rotates it around its center, um, which is sometimes the correct thing to do and sometimes not, but I had to pick a particular behavior and that, that's just what it's using now. And I'm gonna actually